Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, it's going to be a little bit bizarre. Um, it's going to be a very speculative video. It's going to be a video around the theory or my kind of theory of the nature of the universe. Now, please do know, and you will know this by the end of the video anyway, this is a complete theory. There are probably a couple of holes in it um, at this point in my, in my kind of progression with it, I suppose. And yes, you could argue whether it's better to me, uh, for me just to leave this video and not put it out there until I've got a bit more of a solid theory. However, I'm so excited to just share this theory with you. Uh, this is kind of what could be termed as, I suppose, well, definitely speculative philosophy, but also just fun philosophy. I just enjoy speculating on the nature of the universe. That's something I absolutely enjoy. Uh, it definitely comes into the realm of metaphysical questions and things like, like that. Um, but yeah, just, you know, humour me. Uh, if you disagree in any way, whack it down below. We can have a conversation. Please be adult about it. Don't just, like, completely call me out because, I mean, this isn't a belief of mine. This isn't uh, something I have faith in. This isn't something I... Um, completely think is reality or anything. It is just a speculative, speculative theory of mine. But I think it's nice to be respectful of that, um, just as you would be respectful, for example, if you were, um, I don't know, you know, if you were a Buddhist, let's say, you would be respectful of a Christian and their views, you know. So be respectful, but I don't mind people disagreeing with me and saying, well, this might not be completely correct, maybe you need to look at it in this way, etc. That's perfectly healthy, perfectly natural, and I invite it and I welcome it in. Um, and then obviously if you if you would like to just chat down below about some different theories you have, or maybe some of the positive aspects of what I'm going to be disclosing here with you, um, you can do that as well. But anyway, with that being said, let's get into this. So I've actually got it on, I've got a whiteboard up on this side of the green screen because I have, uh, I bought a whiteboard, I don't know, two or three months ago. It was actually for my other channel, my other YouTube channel, but I don't use it as much anymore. But it's got the actual theory um, on here. And it's what I call the eternal energy theory. Now, as we all know in science, energy can't be destroyed. It just changes state. So with that basis in mind, I kind of constructed this theory. So I don't know how plausible the theory of the Big Bang is in terms of within scientific communities. I'm guessing that it's probably the best theory for the beginning of the universe that we have so far. But what I think happens, and I'm not sure about the first Big Bang, I'm not sure about that maybe maybe the universe manifested itself out of nothingness and the first big bang got created but then that energy because it can't be destroyed simply changes state and obviously is expanded but let me start with a theory so you have the big bang let's say and there's this huge mass of energy that's exploding out exploding out as far as i i um as far as i understand it you know there's this huge explosion bigger than anything you could ever imagine and this energy expands outward and essentially the universe gets created in that way and at first it's you know it's all chaotic and it's crazy and there's rocks all here and there and there's gas well at first probably gases but then like rocks and things like that and then planets start to form and stars start to form etc etc Obviously, a scientist could put it in a lot more elegant way than I can. Obviously, um, they could be able to actually track it a lot better as well and say, well, this appeared first, then this appeared first, etc. But that isn't like really relevant to this theory. So, first off, I want to like kind of associate it to something we do in normal life, right? Because this comes along, it comes along with, alongside the theory of the microcosm and the macrocosm, which was like Socrates and Plato's theory of how the individual or the, the microorganism is in harmony with the macroorganism, which is essentially the universe, which I believe Plato, I don't know whether this was his complete faith or complete understanding, 
but he did put in this theory that uh, the universe could be considered like an intelligent organism. So essentially, and if we are a part of the universe, which we are, obviously we're inside it and we've come out of it essentially, um, but if we are a part of the universe, then we're going to replicate the process in which the universe is going gonna, is gonna to follow. So this is where the basis from this theory comes from as well, a little bit of that. And I know that microcosm and macrocosm aren't necessarily like really rec recognised at the moment in philosophy or not many people actually cover them anymore. I don't know why this is. It seemed throughout like um, for, a ver for a very long time between the time of Plato's and Plato and Socrates up until uh, I think it was like 16th, 17th century, something like that. They just simply weren't recognised and I think maybe over the past hundred years or so they've not been recognised as much but I really do think that Plato and Socrates did have something here um, and I think it was Plato that must have wrote it because um, I don't think so Socrates actually wrote down any of his theories and stuff so I think it was Plato who wrote it and maybe built on it a little bit but essentially imagine that you're, you're a bundle of energy right and I might I might end up looking at the board every now and then because I need to refresh myself because I've not got it uh, I know the theory of it, but I'm not, you know, it, it can be quite complex in, in your mind, so I might need to look at the board a little bit. But essentially, you feel like a bundle of energy. So what you want to do, you really feel in the mood for some exercise, right? You know, you you on this particular day, for whatever reason, you're a bundle of energy and you want to do some exercise. So what you decide to do is you decide to go to the gym. So then you're at the gym and uh, maybe you decide to do an hour session and for the first half an hour, something like that, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. You're powering it, you're here, there and everywhere going on different machines, you're doing the weights, you feel brilliant, you absolutely feel brilliant, you're really utilising that energy that you wanted to utilise but then slowly over the course of, let's say this is an hour's session. Slowly over the course of that, maybe 40 minutes in, 45 minutes in, you start to slowly approach your maximum limit, the place of no return, you can't do any more. You start to slowly approach that, and as you're approaching it, you start to slow down naturally because you've simply not got the energy that you once had when uh, you were you first came to the gym essentially and that's completely natural of course that's this flow of energy essentially and then what happens is you get to the point of no return you get to your limit your max limit and then you say no that's me done for today you know, I've done a brilliant workout, it's been brilliant, but, but that's me done for today. And what you do is you might take two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, just to sit down for a minute before you go home. Uh, maybe you, I, I don't know, maybe you chat to a couple of people in the gym for five minutes before you go home, something like that, but you just stopped. You're not doing any exercise, you're not expending any energy in that way anymore. You've just simply stopped once you've hit that limit. Then what happens is you decide to go home and maybe before you go home or maybe as you're walking home or whatever, maybe you're going home and train, something like that, maybe you've picked something up from the vending machine, or, I don't know, some sort of protein bar, some sort of juice or whatever, you start to, you, you have a drink, you replenish your energy as you're going home, right? And then you get home and you maybe have a rest. Uh, you maybe, I don't know, you maybe have uh, some more food or something like that and then after a certain amount of time you feel energised again and feel like you can do it all over again, right? And that is the flow of this energy essentially. So this is really interesting because now let's look at, l let's look at the universe. So we have this big bang like I've talked about. It then explodes out and it's got it's this big bundle of energy and it explodes out and all these new things are being created. I don't know what happened first, but I'm guessing maybe gases came about first and then we maybe started to form little rocks and stuff. And then obviously over time stars and planets and things like that started to come into existence. So at first this big bang is this bundle of energy that is just incredible but it's just uh, explosive essentially just like when you were first at the gym right so this explosion explodes out and then obviously it gets to a certain point in which the energy of that initial explosion that initial big bang 
can't be utilised as effectively by the universe on its expanse because it's stretched all that energy out over billions of light years, let's say, right? So then it stretches that out completely, right? And then it gets closer and closer to its limit. And as it's getting closer, and this happens over billions and billions of years, of course, because uh, obviously now we're, what, 14.3 billion years into the universe. So this, ha this isn't just like your hour at the gym. This is... On the macro um, cosm side of it, this is billions and billions of years. So the time scales are massively different. But the, what I'm trying to do is, is shift your perspective of the fact that the uh, microcosm, the individual, kind of is in this harmony with the universe. So it expands over billions and billions of years. And then what happens is, in my belief, at one point, it will stop. It will stop and then what will happen is when it gets to this point of, of, of stopping, of hitting its limit, because that energy can't expand and expand and expand and expand forever. It's simply not the case. You can't you can't expand that energy of that explosion for, for eternity. It just doesn't work that way. It has to at some point stop. So then what it does is it stops, right? And then this is like when you hit your limit at the gym. You've not got any energy left just as that explosion there's no energy left from that original explosion for the universe to keep expanding right so what it does is it stops it has a break for a bit maybe it just stops as it is and then because energy likes to change and it likes to reform and it likes to reshape um I don't know why this is, but this is the nature of the universe. It's like our energies are always changing. For example, our cells are always changing, replicating, you know, renewing, that sort of stuff. And then, obviously, the ultimate change, I suppose, for an organism is death. And then, obviously, new organisms come, come, alive, you know, come to life and stuff. So that's always happening. I don't know why it is, but this energy is going to change. So it seems to me fundamental to the principle of energy that this energy isn't going to just stay still the universe isn't just going to when it stops just stay still in one position forever it just it goes against the the laws of energy essentially it goes against what energy um is about really is about this changing so but but you see you can't just get energy from from staying still it has to do something there has to be an action there so just like when you uh, sort of retrace your steps back home and maybe you eat uh, a protein bar as you're doing so maybe you get home and you have a bit of a rest etc just as you do that the universe has got to do that to replenish the energy so this is why I believe it does what happens is the universe folds back in on itself crushing all this energy all these planets all these asteroids all these suns all these stars all this energy it crushes it back in and this is to be able to change the energy and form itself into something new because it has to be in a state of change all the time it has to be renewing itself in a different way and if we are to go down the route and this is aside from my theory i'm not too sure whether i want this to come into my theory but if we are to believe that the universe is an intelligent organism then we could say that the universe would want to do this would want to come back in on itself to be able to experience something new just like we like to experience something new as individuals uh, as like sort of microorganisms um on this planet we like to experience new things we like to change we don't like things to stay the same so Essentially, what's happening is this universe is coming back in. And this is just like when, as I say, you're going home. And what's happening here, the universe is crushing all this energy of itself, the energy of itself, back in together, smaller and smaller and smaller. And as the energy gets tighter and tighter and tighter and closer back to that point, that home point of the Big Bang, what's happening is all this energy from 90 billion light years or however long the universe is at that point in which it starts to recede, um, is now getting, it's, it's like vibrating like crazy, it's getting very, very, uh, like a bundle of energy again, get, and getting quite unstable as well, because this energy is in a, is contained in a smaller field essentially. So maybe it crushes itself so far in. Now this is the really speculative part of it. I don't know how big 
um, this universe, how, sorry, how small this universe will get when it crushes itself back into the the maximum amount it can do, right? But I, you know, I, I would assume maybe bigger than a planet, something like that, and 90 billion light years of stuff are crammed inside this tiny, tiny, small space. Then what happens is because it's so unstable again and there's so much energy, just like when you've had, just like when you've had from a gym, uh, when you when you've got back from the gym and you've had something to eat, you feel as if you've got all this energy again after a, you know an hour or two uh, of rest or whatever. You you can take on the world again. You can go back to the gym just as that. When when all this energy is being unstable and it's come, the universe has come back in and crushed itself back into this, it then explodes again in another big bang. And the universe is just doing this repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. And as we all know that this idea that energy is eternal, that does make sense scientifically in that regard, in that portion of the theory of why the universe would do this, because energy is eternal and energy is always changing. So in that way, what the universe does is when it like expands out again in another big bang, it can form new planets and new uh, and new stars and stuff and view itself in a different way. And again, this comes back to a little bit of my influence uh, by Alan Watts, of course, with him saying about the, the universe being essentially um, a view of itself and things like that in the form of the micro microcosm or the microorganism. But you know, essentially what it can do, the universe in this way, when it expands, is it can experience new planets. So, you know, maybe five billion years, ten billion years into the universal expansion, new uh, life can come about from different planets in which it's always changing. So we, essentially, could be one life form of this specific universe and we might last in this universe a few more billion years until the universe crushes itself back in and then creates itself again and then in another five billion years after that after that next creation of it well it's not really a creation but next transformation of the universe new life could reside in a similar sort of space to this, I suppose, um, in, in regards to space in the universe, um, a similar sort of space on this, on uh, maybe even a similar planet to this, but different. So, like, uh, it could be different physiolog... Uh, physiolog I can't say that word. It could be. It could look different. Different physiologically. I think that's how you pronounce. I can't pronounce that word, but it could look different physiologically. Um, but essentially, it would have the same consciousness as us. It would be maybe it'd be as intelligent as us, or whatever, depending on the evolution of the planet. But you see how this works, and you see how this ties in with the macro organism as we being a part of the universe, as we being a tiny, small part of the universe, but. If we are to believe that we are an intrinsic part of the universe, we are that, then we must um, operate in the same way as the wider universe operates, because essentially it's just one part of, of the same process in one way, as I talked about in my polar thinking video with the analogy of the being at one with, with our environment and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's the theory. So, essentially, uh, just to very, very quickly recap, I won't spend too much time recapping um, but essentially I've got it on the board here so energy slow down hit your limit then you stop then you go home or the meanwhile maybe while you're going home you eat something to replenish that energy um, and then you get back to a state of being a bundle of energy again just as in the universe you got a big bang the universe expands tons of energy starts to slow down then what happens is it starts to hit its limit, it then stops at the limit, it then recedes back in and obviously in the form of essentially eating the planet or eating itself in one way. Obviously it wouldn't be called eating, it's just simply crushing energy in essentially or utilising its own energy for its own benefit. Um, but then crushing itself back in, then going home in the form of going back to that state of the Big Bang, so it goes back home, then it may uh, rest, it might rest for a period while all this energy is, is being very, very unstable and then after another period don't know, obviously time scales on this, uh, that's for mathematicians or scientists, I'm a philosopher, I'm, I'm abstract, I don't do time scales and stuff, but um, after a certain time scale, it then boom again, and that's the universe. Now, 
Is that an interesting theory? Because I think that's an interesting theory. I'm sure maybe someone's had it in the past, like maybe 20 years ago, maybe 200 years ago. I don't know. Someone might have had it, but not talked about it. I've not looked on Google at any of these theories or anything. Um, it very much does come into that realm, as I've mentioned, of the mac microcosm and macrocosm of, uh, you know, Socrates, Plato, that sort of idea. It very much draws upon some of the conclusions that I've got from listening to tons of hours of, of Alan Watts. It's drawn upon also, um, like, sort of spirituality and, and energy in that regard as well. But it's also drawn a, a little bit upon... Um, I've watched a lot of scientific documentaries of Brian Cox and things like that. And it also, I suppose... It draws upon a little bit of that as well so it's a good mix you know his theory kind of draws upon philosophy it draws upon science draws upon uh, spirituality uh, and things like that really so um i don't know there might be holes in it i mean the one major hole for me i would like to point out is where did the big like the first big bang where did that come from it doesn't necessarily solve that uh, we could of course just say it came out of nothingness or something but it, i i i I feel like there might be, I don't know, that could be a good theory, but I feel like it might be, there might be a bit more to it than that, and that would be something I'd like to integrate with this theory in the future, if I can do a little bit more philosophizing, maybe even a little bit more look into science, to be able to integrate that with this theory, and then to uh, obviously get a more holistic theory from this, and maybe a little bit more of a theory that certain people could have faith in, I mean, it's one of those things that it's it's great as a theory, you know, but to be able to actually realistically believe it or have faith in it, it's hard to do so because you can't, it's one of these things that you just can't define, like you can't define the meaning of life and, and stuff like that. Or I mean, maybe in the future they might do, but because then I, I want to do a video on this actually, the debate on whether it, it's right. Uh, of philosophers to try and prove the meaning of life or whether it should just be left alone because of the negative consequences that could that could form around it but anyway i'm going to leave it there for this video guys it will have been a long one uh yeah it's probably going to be about 25 minutes or something so i apologize about that you probably knew that i had a lot of passion for that theory because it i just love i love uh this realm of of i suppose it's metaphysics but just identifying the nature of the universe and seeing how that could could work and stuff and it's very um exciting for me because i suppose it's fantasy in a way in one way it's a little bit fantasy and i'm the person who loves fantasy and uh you know alternate realities and all that sort of stuff so it comes into that a little bit but anyway thank you very much for entertaining me if you've got to this point thank you very much for obviously listening to my theory because as i say i really did want to get that out there and i really truly appreciate anyone who's stuck with this and actually listened to what i have to say on that theory um i truly appreciate it because you know i know that this can sometimes be a bit boring for people or it can be a bit like oh yeah that's just poppycock or whatever but at least like if you've got to this point and you've stuck with me you at least um somewhat appreciate the theory for the fact that it is just a speculative theory and that's all i want people to appreciate it for and uh, so i'm really happy that if anyone's got to this point um you know they've, they've at least listened to it a little bit so with that being said drop any comments down below on your ideas with this is it something that is um you know could be a valid theory is it something that we could integrate with science is it something that could be um an interesting viewpoint on um the nature of the universe not necessarily the start of the universe but the nature in which the universe takes and manifests itself essentially or or continues to manifest itself so with that being said i will leave it there guys and i will see you in the next one